Because when I started this chicken business, I, I was sinful and all, but I prayed to God that if he'd make it a success, I'd see that his cause was always remembered and taken care of first. And you have. And I hope I have. Yes, you And have. still doing it. I am so happy to welcome, to praise the Lord and Southern California, Colonel Harlan Sanders. Give Colonel Sanders a Southern California welcome. Thank you, Thank you. And then seated to the Colonel's left is Pastor Wayman Rogers of Evangel Tabernacle in Louisville, Kentucky. Let's let Colonel, the Colonel and Pastor Rogers know. Amen. Colonel, we've been looking forward to this time. Just really been looking forward to your coming to be with us. We thought it would never happen, and finally, here it is. God has brought us all together for this very night. It's a wonderful night, and I can do that. <laughs> I was looking over your book. Life, as I have known it, has been finger licking good. And look who just walked out on the set with us. Here's the whole McDuff. Hi, Brother McDuff. McDuff. Hi. Hi, Brother McDuff. Hi, Brother McDuff. Hi, Brother McDuff. Hi, Brother McDuff. Just Brother all McDuff, three yeah. of them. John McDuff and Roger <laughs> McDuff. We're so glad to have them. Let them know. Amen. <laughs> that we love them very much. All right, you're such so great singers. Oh, thank you. Know. Thank you, Colonel. We'll never forget the night in Louisville, Kentucky, when you came to the revival service at Evangel Tabernacle where Pastor Rogers is uh, the great pastor and one of the, just one of the great pastors of our day. That's right. And uh, how that the Lord brought you to himself. And Roger and John and myself along with Pastor Rogers all played a key role in that, as did many other people who have not been mentioned, and we're going to mention them. Some names that perhaps a lot of folks have never heard before, such Somebody as... Somebody must have done a lot of praying, too. <laughs> That's the whole that. thing. That's the whole thing. That's Prayer right. is the whole thing. Colonel, you've experienced the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You bet you. It's a great, great experience and the greatest experience I've had in my 89 years. Praise before. the Lord. 89 yeah. years of age. What do you think about your great-granddaughter receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as her Savior? I think that was one. I'm so proud because she was born and raised in a Catholic family. And Very devout and uh, a good family they were. Yes. And the Catholic religion's all right. Yes. Yes. If they just knew what made them Catholics, they don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> but they're just as devout and a Catholic Christian, and I guess it's just as good as any other Christian. And I have known some that were. But they don't have to ask some priest to intercede for them with the Lord. They can go straight to the Lord with their talk their problem. That's exactly what you did. And that's, why, that's the way I think it ought to be done. Recently, you experienced a very beautiful healing uh, Pastor Rogers was telling us about it on the way from the airport today. Yes. I was hospitalized for a pop in the big colon, you know, the large colon. And uh, I know it was there because I, when I, they had me on the table rolling me back and forth to the barium, you know, I could see that polyp hanging on the, the colon, shaking. So Brother Rogers is in there I get calling on some of his people in the church, of the church. And he come in my room, and of course, he didn't leave me and actually have a pastoral prayer, which I appreciated very much. Amen. But when I told him I was going to have that polyp removed, I said, it's a very simple thing. I said, they'll just cut the front of the stomach here, and there it'll be. And uh, in his prayer, he laid his hand on my stomach and prayed to God Almighty that he'd remove the malady that was causing Praise my God. surgery. <laughs> Praise God. Well, next morning, of course, I went through the surgery. And they didn't find anything there. The polyp had gone. Got it. Then I thought back when I was discharging the, this enema. I heard some go plunk in the commode, and I thought it was some fecal matter, something from the colon, don't you see? But since they didn't find any polyp there, I know it was the polyp that went. That's so, fast. It. And then the second time, I, I, two years later, an examination they showed that I should have another operation for a polyp. 
and it's going. I know I'll be going to the hospital again in about two weeks to, for a complete physical, and I hope to goodness they don't find more polyps in there. I don't believe they will. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Rogers, you have a little bit of background information there, too, because one of the doctors belongs to your church. Yes, we, uh, uh, I was in prayer that day, and, uh, and I did not know that the colonel was in the hospital and had a special burden for him and uh, felt, uh, felt like I ought to call his home. So I called his wife, and she said, well, uh, the colonel's in the hospital. He said he undergoes surgery tomorrow. And uh, I said, well, I'll go by and see him. So we went to, we went to the hospital and um, had prayer for him, and God uh, did a great miracle. Now, one of the members of our church is, is a surgeon who knew the surgeon who uh, performed uh, the surgery on, on the colonel. And um, he was talking with this uh, Jewish surgeon who had performed the surgery and couldn't find the polyp. And, um, and he, he said, I don't know what happened. He said, I, I know it was there. And said, I'm embarrassed that I performed the surgery and couldn't find it. And uh, the uh, surgeon who is a member of our church, a born again uh, man, he, uh, of course, was able to witness to this Jewish surgeon about the power of God and how that uh, God had uh, let a miracle happen and the great physician had beat him to the job that day. Praise the Lord. Praise Pastor the Rogers, Lord. Pastor Rogers, wasn't there something uh, said about we're going to have a mad colonel on our hands when he finds out we operated on him for nothing? <laughs> they, he, he, he thought the colonel would be angry about it. Of course, uh, uh, the, when, of course the colonel knew what had happened. Uh, when he found out it wasn't there, then he immediately uh, gave God the glory and uh, wasn't angry with the, with the surgeon. So he relieved their fears and said, oh, that's all right. Jesus took care of it. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful that the Lord answers prayer and Amen. then performs miracles yet today, just like the, in the days of Christ? Amen. Oh, it's happening. It's, it's wonderful. Happening. wonderful. And folks are going to be healed tonight yes, they are. also. I hope that. I hope oh, so. they're going to be. I, I, I'm greatly concerned for a lot of the older people. You see, I was about, what, 77, wasn't it, when I found the Lord? Right. I knew... Uh, I should have him. I knew I should walk with him, but I, I couldn't reach him. I, my sinfulness kept me. You see, I used to curse terrible. Mm -hmm. Did it ever since uh, boyhood when I went to railroading. I got in the habit of it. And I, I wanted to quit for years and years, but I couldn't. Couldn't quit to save my life. I'd say I cursed by note. I could do the prettiest job of cursing everybody in the world. <laughs> but I, I know it was, it was my soul would go to hell. My tithing and going to church and living right with my fellow man and all, that's not going to get you to heaven. You've got to get God in your heart and you've got to get in his heart too. Amen. And Amen. so I'd had a lot of close calls. There's no wonder this thing happened like it has. No wonder I'm living to be for 89 years because he may have some more work for me to do. I, I don't know. I believe it does. But way back in 1924, we had a swinging bridge, a cable bridge from my front yard, crossed Hickman Creek over to the cliff and the highway and then went around, get a wave home. On uh, three days before Thanksgiving, a real frosty cold morning, I was pulling my son's car to get it started before the kids go to school before I left for my trip on the road, you see. and. Uh, the eye of that rod that went down in the ground to the dead man to hold the other end of the cable snapped, and the cable fell, and just like turned to drop in the tailgate of a wagon, you see, just down, and I fell 42 foot, head down in my car, and that was back in the days when we didn't have metal top cars, it was just a bow and the cloth over it. Yes. But I fell that 42 foot, and I come out, got out from under the car, out of the rain, rubbed myself, and uh, I was about, I guess, uh, four or five minutes before I come to. I was knocked out. I remember how it was, and the lights went out. And when I come out, why, there was a whole bunch of people up on the cliff. They'd heard of the fall, you see, and they'd scream and get the doctor, get the doctor. And I hollered back to him. I said, let the doctor alone till I tell you I'll get him when I want him. <laughs> and I walked the house. And in the wintertime, you can see this scar from my eyebrow all up over my forehead. It shows up in the cold, and my head just busted open the top. I see just a part of it. And uh, I held the hair together, you know, to hold that wound together. 
till jag gått till det huset och jag höll det tills det koagulation stoppade the bleeding and never did wash it out of the blood out of the hair or nothing never had it dressed or anything you see and i thought then or now well the lord either saving me to punish me for the sinfulness i had been had done <laughs> or you going to use me i didn't know which either one <laughs> i had to accept it <laughs> god but that was and so then again a few days later i would happen to be involved with uh, some other people in a shooting scrape. I wasn't the, one of the persons to get in. It was between two other parties and I was the third party with them. But he wanted to shoot all three of us, don't you see? So I went through that. The bullets just whizzed by your head, you know. And finally I... Uh, was that when the bootleggers were about to rob your station? No, uh, that, we, that was another time we had that. <laughs> <laughs> This come up over over a sign, and uh, I come through that clean without a, without a scratch. One of, one of my buddies with me, the distributor for the Shell Oil Company, he was killed in that battle, mm -hmm. and I come through. Well, how did I get through? The Lord either wanted to save me to punish me, and I knew I had some punishment coming, or He's going to use me. Thank God, and it's just been a great, wonderful life. Well, what about the time, Colonel, when when? Uh when the bootleggers were, you were, you had your establishment in a place called, uh, known as Hell's Half Acre. That's right. And uh, you had a station there and bootleggers were around and they were about to rob the station. What was that? No, they were shooting it out between themselves. One of them a call, said the other bootleggers whiskey tasted like pine burrs, you see. <laughs> and, and he resented it and they were shooting. And I, of course, foolishly, I got my big gun, walked out there, it's a quiet thing down, they could have popped me down, I didn't know. It. But anyhow, that was more between them. But I then, think that you, you walked out though, and uh, you had on, you didn't have any trousers on. I just had on a little trunks in my underwear. Right? And uh, you <laughs> didn't, uh, didn't your, uh, your daughter, didn't Margaret, you started to go to town with them or something, the police had come or what was this, yeah. you were gonna take them to town and, and Margaret came, she ran bringing your trousers to you and said, if you're gonna go to town, you better put your trousers on. <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> well. Those times that it happened fast and they're exciting, you know. <laughs> and you don't really, you'd be run without your pants and wouldn't know it. <laughs> but then I had, I had a cafeteria. I gave you one more experience where I, the Lord saved me. I had a cafeteria at Oak Ridge during the World War. Mm -hmm. And I was taking some fresh chicken and country hams up to my restaurant from Oak Ridge to Corbin, Kentucky, to my restaurant one Sunday morning. It's about nine o'clock and going through the Cumberland Canyon. Remember how crooked the road is through that canyon? Mm -hmm. And I, the sun shining in my face. Uh, you go, I just went to sleep and didn't realize it. The road faded out. My car went over the cliff. I waked up just as my front wheels were going over. That car turned over three times, landed down at the foot of the cliff against a tree by the creek, right side up. Not a scratch on me or the two fellows in the front seat with me. The top of my down that we had humped over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. Why did the Lord bring me through that? It, we, he could have really uh, showed me that I better get right because he's going to punish me if I didn't see him. He was being merciful to you. And I wanted to, I wanted to uh, get out of my sin for cursing. I'd been a pretty good man every other way, but I couldn't. I even went to the World Convention of the Christian Church in 1952, thinking the association, the, that week of prayer and enthusiasm for all the ministers and the fine Christians to be over there, that I surely could get an inspiration where I could receive the Lord and He's willing to come in. Well, sure. I come back just like I was. Yeah. <laughs> I remember you said that uh, you'd make a joke with some of the uh, minister friends and some of us sometimes aren't maybe as, as sharp as we need to be in talking with po folks about their, about their souls. And you said that on the plane going over there that you'd make a joke and you wanted to let somebody know that you really weren't ready to meet the Lord and you said to those ministers, yeah. you said if this plane were to... I said it'd be a terrible thing if this plane goes to the bottom of that ocean, you ministers all go to heaven and meet me down there. <laughs> and that, that's the way it would have been. That's the way it would so have been. So I just said, you know, I, I think, once, I hope that the people that have reached the later years of life and haven't accepted Christ wholly, 
and give themselves. I hope that they don't put it off too long. Because listen, time's getting shorter all the time. Yes. See, for us. Yes, it is. And today, I, there, I was fortunate enough to get by last 77. How many of them died? 60, 65, That's 64. That's true. And 70, 80. They don't all get by. So it's been a great place. I, have, I thank God, though, I have, I think, paid my debt a whole lot to him since then, since I would come into money and ability to do it, don't you see? Yes, yes. Because when I started this chicken business, I, I was sinful and all, but I prayed to God that if he'd make it a success, I'd see that his cause was always remembered and taken care of first. And you have. And I hope I have. Yes, you And have. still doing it. I've never believed, uh, I've got a strange philosophy there, it's crazy, no use being the richest man in the cemetery because you can't do any business from there. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's a good philosophy. <laughs> I've tried to fulfill my obligation to the Lord for bringing me through all those close calls, giving me health, and have, I just don't know too many 89, 88-year-old men traveling a quarter of a million miles a year and doing their work like they always did. And good health, enjoying good health and everything. The Lord takes care of you. Yes, no does. question about it. Yes, He does. And you have to praise Him dozens of times a day when you realize what you have given. 